I'm back. Hey everyone, uh, glad to be back with you on this Monday morning, May 24th. Uh, Vicar has given me back the reins to uh, uh, do some devotions with you until he gets back from all of his gallivanting and traveling around the country. Uh, so it's good to be with you again to uh, spend a few minutes uh, sharing with you God's Word in preparation for our next Sunday. So it is Monday, May 24th. We're turning our attention to what will be the Sunday of, most people will think of it as Memorial Day, uh, but in the church calendar, this is Trinity Sunday. Uh, so for uh, many uh, people in the church, they think this is the Sunday, and it's true for us too, that we pull out that long, confusing uh, creed we call the Athanasian Creed that we uh, discuss or that we uh, confess to. Um, but it's a, a Sunday where we acknowledge and glorify God for being three persons in one. Uh, one uh, essence, one unity. Uh, one God, three persons. Uh, we'll talk some more about that later on this week as we look at this uh, great thing that we call the Trinity. Uh, so today we're going to start looking at the lessons for this upcoming Sunday. Today we're going to start with uh, the um, reading from the Old Testament from the book of Isaiah. And this is, in a sense, you can call it Isaiah the prophet's call into the ministry um, when he is brought into the, the Lord's temple uh, and commissioned to speak God's word. So um, it's a vision. It gives him a glimpse of the divine glory that is God. Uh, it's overwhelming. And we'll see this in the psalm lesson that we'll look at tomorrow as well. Uh, the overwhelming power and might of God. So Isaiah chapter 6. Oh, but before we do that, we got to start uh, with our... Uh, uh, beginning of our devotion again page 296 this is uh, the daily prayer litany for midday in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen listen to my prayer O god do not ignore my plea hear me and answer me evening morning and noon i cry out in distress and he hears my voice cast your cares on the lord and he will sustain you he will never let the righteous fall Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Back to Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of this robe filled the temple. First off, we're given a date here, a specific year, uh, the year that King Uzziah died. Uh, that is the year of 740 B.C. He was the king of Judah. Um, of course, this points then, um, given that context, who is the only king uh, to be king forever, who is God himself. And he is uh, his, the train of his robe even is so great, it fills this heavenly temple. Verse 2, above him stood the seraphim. Now here they're sort of acting as guards, as honor guards, uh, in a position really is, is what that means to stand, uh, to st that they stood before God. Um, and, and they do this, of course, they're angels. They've got uh, wings here, so they're flying around this throne. He says each had six wings. With two, he covered, they, he covered his face, sign of reverence. With two, he covered his feet, and with two, he flew. Verse 3, And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, if you're a liturgical Lutheran, you recognize this. We sing this very, very often. Holy, holy, holy. Uh, it's a great uh, hymn uh, that, as I think about it, we have to sing that on Trinity Sunday, right? Holy, holy, holy. Uh, it, it points to, obviously, reminds us of the Trinity, right? That there are three persons in this Godhead. Um, but also, uh, in Hebrew, when you see a term like this repeated three times, uh, it's, it's like a superlative. It's the holiest of holies sort of thing. So, so both are playing there together. 
Verse 4. Oh, uh, before we go on, Lord of Hosts, uh, that's a military sense uh, there. So um, uh, uh, to think of, again, in terms of that power and that might that God has. And then they talk about how, how the whole earth is full of his glory. A history is full of the glory of God. Nature is overwhelmed by the glory of God. It is all around us. It is inside of us. Verse 4, And the fountains of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Those thresholds, yeah, that's a tough word to say, isn't it? Thresholds are the very foundations of the earth itself. Verse 5, And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Now, of course, this is Isaiah talking, and this term woe is a term of desperation. It's a term of conviction, of knowledge, of one's demise, that one is doomed. Uh, Jesus uses this term in terms of the Pharisees. Woe to you, he says. Uh, so here you hear Isaiah fully aware and understanding in the presence of God uh, that he is a sinful person, uh, sinful lips, ceremonially unclean, full of sin. Not only him, but all the people around him. And now he's in the presence of this mighty God. Woe is me. Verse 6. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. Now this is the altar of incense that had this uh, this burning, that smoke was going up. It represented um, the people's prayers going up to God. Um, and, and here, uh, the, this is in the holy heavenly temple, right, that the angel takes this and touches it to uh, Isaiah's lips to cleanse him, to forgive him, to renew him. Uh, the, the idea with tongs, I've heard a couple things. One is just a, a reverence of the holy things of God, uh, that the angel won't touch that personally. Uh, maybe it's because he's an angel. I've also heard, uh, kind of interesting to think about, that some of these angels are, are depicted as being fire, yet the tongs from the altar are too hot for them to touch. Uh, anyway, the, the, the main focus here is that this is taken to Isaiah and he is cleansed by the angel by God himself we continue with verse 7 he says this and he touched my mouth and said behold this has touched your lips your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for there God is the one doing the work God is cleansing Isaiah as he does us of our sins and now Isaiah is readied to go out and be the prophet. Uh, he has been forgiven. He has been renewed by God himself. And now he is sent out. He is ready for that. Verse 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Notice the, the change in pronouns there. Singular, whom shall I send? And then plural, who will go for us? Three and one, one and three. Then I said, here am I, send me. My dear friends, in Jesus Christ, uh, not all of us are called to be pastors, but all of us are called to be evangelists. Each of us have been brought into the holy temples, uh, uh, to God's presence. Uh, we have been forgiven, we have been renewed, and we are sent out joyfully, filled with the love and forgiveness of God uh, to speak on his behalf, to share that good news of who Christ is, who we are, and what he has done for us. For all of us are sinful people living amongst sinful people, yet because of God and brought into his presence through baptism, through preaching of the word and holy absolution, through 
uh, the partaking of his very body and blood, we are cleansed. And again, we are sent out. Send me, dear Lord. Let's continue with our devotion. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. The little Trinitarian uh, emphasis there again, right? Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all evil, error, to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't forget, wash your hands, sing that doxology, sing holy, holy, holy. Know that you are forgiven, you are renewed, and you are sent out to love your neighbor and to tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. Have a great day.